doing right now is a demonstration uh, of how beekeepers actually get the honey out of the comb. If you come through our walkway, or if you have a chance to go out there later, you'll see a long line of uh, what you think of when you see think of beehives. The old, and, and there's one at the back of the room here as well, we call that a skep style hive. Now these hives are well, look who it is. Are you going to help Dad extract honey? It must be yours. Is that what you're going to do? There's a long line of uh, skep beehives. And 150 years ago, that's how beekeepers kept their bees. Uh, these are Hollywood-sized uh, versions of it. If you think of a half to two-thirds of that size is the size a beekeeper would keep bees in. We did... Uh, a lot of the work we do is with the film industry. We do beekeeping stunts, and one of the movies we did a few years ago, yes, there's bees, was a Nicolas Cage movie called Wicker Man. And the crew let us keep their props. They're, they're styrofoam, but they look like a beehive. And if you look at them, they're open on the bottom. And so the beekeeper would take the hive, tip it over, and he'd reach in and scoop out the comb and it would break all the comb apart and the bees would have to go back in and rebuild the hive. Uh, and it takes a lot of work to build honeycomb. A honeybee has to eat seven to 10 pounds of honey. She has to use the energy from seven to 10 pounds of honey to make one pound of beeswax. And so the beekeeper loses a lot of honey every time the bees have to rebuild the beeswax. <clears throat> About 150 years ago, Beekeepers started using hives with removable frames. We have a wooden frame, and we put a thin sheet of wax down the middle, the whole depth of the frame, that's printed with a honeycomb pattern. Now, bees don't need that, but it gives them a heck of a head start. Because we use these removable frames, we can take one frame out at a time, we can take the honey out of the frame, and this one I extracted the honey from yesterday. You can see the comb is still intact. There's a little bit of damage on it that the bees will have to repair, but they're very quick at repairing just this little minor bit of damage. And so we can save a lot of the comb in the hive. When the worker bee is out foraging, she collects nectar from flowers. And nectar is about 80% water and less than 20% sugar. And the sugar in nectar is sucrose, that's white table sugar. Uh, the bees bring it back to the hive in a special chamber in their body called their honey stomach. It's not their actual stomach, so if anybody tells you that honey is bee vomit, they're lying to you. <laughs> honey bees lack opposable thumbs, so they have a really hard time carrying buckets back to the hive. They have a special chamber in their body that does the job for them. And in that special chamber, there's a gland that secretes an enzyme called invertase. And invertase breaks the sucrose in half into two simple sugars called glucose and fructose. And glucose and fructose are easier for the bees to digest, easier for the bees to get the energy out of, and easier for us as well. One of the reasons why honey is a better sugar than uh, table sugar, one of many reasons. Now the nectar starts out at 80% water. When the bees bring it back to the hive, they've mixed it with invertase, the sugar is split into simple sugars, and then the bees stand on the comb and they fan their wings over the comb. When they're fanning the wings over the comb, the water that's in the nectar is evaporating, and the bees evaporate enough water that it goes from 80% water to less than 18% water. When it's less than 18% water, over 80% sugar, there's so much sugar there that nothing can live in the honey. No bacteria, no viruses, no fungus can live in the honey uh, because it, there's too much sugar. At that point, it's what we call honey. The bees put a wax cap over it. This is the capping to keep any water from getting into it. And once this capping is over the cell, the honey is good forever. It's one of the few foods without an expiry date. <clears throat> the only thing that will wreck it is if it gets water into it. 
if the moisture content increases <coughs> above 18%, around 20%, the honey will start to ferment. So as long as we can keep water from getting into the honey, the honey is good forever. But this is a problem to the beekeeper, because how do we get the honey out of the comb? Well, for just a few frames, we go the old-fashioned route and use a fork. But we have a fork with the tines spaced just far enough apart, the same spacing as the cells on the comb. Now, I don't want to wreck the comb. I don't want to scoop the honey out. I just want to put a hole in the capping so that the honey can come out of the frame. So we just take very gently and break open the capics. And you can see the honey coming out from underneath. You'll notice the honey isn't just pouring down the frame. At 80% sugar, it's very viscous, doesn't flow very well. And so we have to spin it very fast in the centrifuge, or honey extraction, to get the honey to come out of the frames. And it also doesn't run down the frames because the cone, each little hole in the cone we call a cell, the bees build the cells with a little bit of an angle up. So the honey puddles in the back. I break open the cap just a little bit. And this extractor holds two frames at a time. And this is about the size of an extractor. If you want a hive, or you have a friend with some hives, and they extract just a couple of boxes of honey in the kitchen, this is the size you use. We have 1,500 colonies, so you can imagine that each hive produces two or three of the boxes you see on the table full of honey, and each box has nine or ten frames in it. You can imagine it would take us a very long time to extract the honey if we had to do it two frames at a time. We're only a small commercial beekeeper. We only have uh, 1,500 colonies. So we have an extractor that extracts 30 frames at a time. And it does that in five minutes. The really big commercial beekeepers have one, sometimes even two extractors that will extract 120 frames at a time. How many hives do you think the biggest beekeeper in North America has? We're fairly small. We have 1,500. How many does the biggest beekeeper in North America have? Getting closer, 80,000 hives. Biggest beekeeper in North America. The biggest beekeeper in Canada is in northern Alberta. He has 12,000 hives. You need big extracting machines, whole buildings. It's just dedicated to taking honey out of the frames.